Hello, Internet. James Allen from Out of Eight. And today I'm playing turn-based strategy game Gettysburg The Tide Turns. This game was on Kickstarter back in 2013, uh, and it's finally been released after a change in development and all that stuff. The uh, game has online play uh, through all the same scenarios using Slytherin's play-by-email system, which works really good. Uh, you can, you know, asynchronously play games, and I'll send you an email when the other person's done uh, their turn, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to start a new scenario in here. Uh, game comes with the full-length campaign, all 30-something turns of it. One turn per hour. It also breaks it down to the first, second, and third day, and then also smaller scenarios for pick a ch charge and three hours on day two. So I'm going to pick the second day. Select your AI difficulty. I'm going to give a max uh, capabilities, and we'll play as uh, the Confederates being from the South and all. Plus, it's more interesting, I think. Anyway. So the way that it works is each day on the campaign or at the end of each of the missions, uh, they determine a victor. The Confederates have to hold two of the objective hexes, which are located on Cemetery Ridge and also for day two on the Little Round Top and Round Top. Whereas the USA simply has to do more casualties. Uh, on the Confederates than the Confederates do against them. If both of these or neither of these things are true, it just ends in a draw, uh, which is, you know, boring. So, uh, these are the units that we have on the board right now. Now, I think the most interesting part of the game is that all of the turn order is completely randomized. What they do is they take all of these little icons and basically throw them in a bag and draw them at random. Uh, you know, using a random number generator. And that includes combat. Combat can happen at any time. First thing, last thing, or anywhere in between. If you have the advantage uh, or the initiative, which is determined by the scenario designers to kind of fulfill the historical thing of who is being more aggressive at what time, you can choose to do combat whenever one of your pieces come up uh, and try to use that to your advantage. But other than that, I think it's really interesting that you don't know who's going to move when, and you can't choose uh, which of your uh, you know, unit groups is going to move. And I think that really adds a lot of replay value to the game, and it adds a lot of uncertainty, which I think works well, uh, making the game different every time you play, and also uh, having to think about different strategies based on uh, who goes next. It also adds a little bit of luck to it, which uh, you know is kind of like real life. So we'll see who gets to go first. Oh, it's me. So, uh, I gotta go here. Cemetery Ridge, also Little Round Top, or, or the regular Round Top. Or up here on the north part near Culp's Hill, uh, if I can get up there, or over here, or over there. I just gotta get two of those. Um, so, first unit that came up are all these guys that are coming in uh, from the road to the west. You'll notice that the map, if you're familiar with Gettysburg, is actually rotated north as towards the left. And that's just because better on widescreen monitors to do it this way because there's more action going uh, north-south. So, I think I might swing these guys around to, uh, to that direction. We'll see where we actually end up going. Uh, now, even though it looks like there's a ton of units in the game, uh, there's only one unit per hex, and they all move as a group. So even though this looks like, you know, it's seven units, it's actually just one unit. You move one at a time. The seven is actually a representation of its health. Uh, when battles occur, which they will shortly, uh, basically damage is done, and once all the little icons disappear, uh, your unit is routed from the field. Uh, and you can't bring them back. If they're missing one or more of the strength without losing all of them, you can keep them stationary for a turn, and they'll regain one strength per turn. So I think it's a really nice visual representation, other than the really uh, nice map uh, that looks you know, historic and all that. And it's easy to tell where the ridges and stuff are. Um, I think it's a really good indication of, uh, you know, quickly you can see where your depleted troops are and stuff like that. Uh, now, because I have the initiative, I can... Uh, do combat at any time. Now I am don't have any of my units basically up. Um, so I'm just going to keep it at random for now. And they get to go next. 
There's no fog of war in the game. You can see where all of the units are at any time, which is kind of like a board game. Uh, let's see. I'm going to just keep those guys on the hill for now. I need to move these guys up. Again, because you can't stack units, when things come all from the same location, they get pretty crowded. Uh, and you simply don't get things up to the front lines as quickly as you want. At least for this scenario, sometimes you have to double click that. Um, I think it's better if I... C I need to sit and wait for my troops to come up. I can go to the menu and see the calendar about uh, when stuff's going to come in. So you can see I get most of my reinforcements on turns 14 and 15, and the Union gets a ton of crap on 16. Uh, and then these are the units that have been uh, pulled each turn, so I've had two and they've had one. And then you can always check your victory status if you want to do that. So, you have this little next button which makes it uh, pretty intuitive to find units. There's no real reason to keep units of the same uh, grouping together other than it just makes it easier to you know move them all at once. Still gonna do Raven. Now this game had some fairly significant bugs uh, which uh, the development team has been working on since the game released and it seems like they fixed them. Uh, which is why I held off on posting the review at least for a little bit to make sure that uh, you know the serious bugs were taken care of. I've tried all the scenarios and I wasn't actually able to finish any of them but one. Uh, AI was not uh, finishing its retreat during combat correctly. Uh, the USA gets to fight. Uh, when it's your turn to fight, you can bombard. Yeah, they're gonna just totally wipe out these people sitting in the town. Uh, and then it does a bunch of different phases about cavalry screenings and then uh, approach fire and combat fire and then people retreat, which we won't have yet because these uh, units are way far away. And these guys, I'm gonna pull back to here. Who's the other unit? No, oh, way back there. Okay, I'll come up the road. It doesn't even really matter. I mean, obviously, you know, the game is basically the Union has a superior defensive positioning, and then the, you know, Confederates have to break through that. I wonder if I could go up and cap that real quick. How quick can you guys move? You guys can actually move pretty far. I'm gonna try to go up here. I don't even really need combat at this point anyway. Just, no, I got it anyway. Just bombardment, that's basically it. That's <laughs> almost entirely it. Oh, and these guys could actually bombard over there. Just have one click out. Something, I guess. Here's the. That's everybody, so that's the healing. So again, I'm gonna do random to see if I can pull. It's probably gonna be at least another turn for these people to march up front. Ugh, artillery first. These guys actually want to move. Move them closer to the front lines. Hmm. Well, I'm going to keep those guys there. So I'm not ready to attack yet. The AI is pretty decent. Now... As you can see here, they're pulling their units back because I'm about to uh, <laughs> try to go around them. Um, sometimes they needlessly move units around, whereas they could have kept them in one spot and have them reheal a point. Oh, they're really pulling back up there. Not a surprise. Yeah, I got their attention. Mm. I really got their attention.
Okay, well you're just gonna pull all your units off that then, I guess. I don't have a problem with that. Oh, see, it would be better if I had these units be able to move. Everybody's stuck on this dang road. I guess that's gonna take like three hours to get these people up to the front lines. Well, shoot, I think I'm just gonna go this way. Stupid units are blocking everybody. USA combat. Yeah. Oh, Stonewall, yeah, well. Probably a good reason why. Quality Elite. That was it. That was it for combat. So I took one of their units out. You can actually get detailed stuff down here uh, if you want, but I usually just keep it close. Alright, who's next? You're next. Can I get up on Cemetery Hill? I can. I think I will. Mm. Don't necessarily want to get all the way up there. These guys are pretty strong. I mean, I'd really like to wait until I get these units up here. But... Yeah, you know, fairly close. March, damn you. You know what? I'm going to pull the combat shit right now. I think I can take these guys out. Uh, no, nah, I think I'm gonna keep everybody. So you get this approach fire, combat phase, and then it kind of just calculates how much damage everybody gets. Sometimes units just retreat, and I will advance. So that and that'll get me that objective location. Uh, there goes Stonewall. Well, bye. Nice knowing you. It's good I got too much attention up here, but my little movement up here essentially made it s <laughs> it totally exposed this area of the map. So that's something, I guess. Well, you obviously have too many units, so I'm going to say the heck with that, and I'm going to just come back to where I was, kind of. A little faint. Alright, well that's the end of that turn. I'll keep it at random. I need to move some units up, maybe. Hopefully we'll get to go first here a little bit. I'd like to get up on the cemetery hill. That'd be nice. And they're pulling back. Alright, hood is next. Oof, you can truck on up there. Uh question is which side do I want to put them on? So you can see the you know mechanics are pretty intuitive, more intuitive than you know a classic war game is, with hundreds of units you got to move at once. Here it's you know pretty manageable. You can click the next button to select the next unit. Uh, the mechanics are pretty intuitive as well, you know, the game rules and stuff like that. This guy right there on this really worries me, because he's got a four against this. I actually might consider attacking and then just using that to retreat this guy, because he's surrounded.
artillery. Hmm. Contemplating moving this these guys over a little bit. Let's keep him up on the hill though. You know what I am gonna do combat. So I need to get this guy retreated out. Effective. You go back. I should have retreated him too. He's out. Yep. Yeah, four damage. You're out. Uh, I actually don't even want to advance in there. Johnson? Johnson. <sighs> Let's do that. I don't really want to pull him up here because then he'll get surrounded, so that's fine. Okay. Well, we're up on the hill, aren't we? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't know which way I want to go. I guess over here. Probably some artillery thing, yeah, way back here. It's important to have a not clear plan of what you want to do. Mm, that looks potentially bad. And unnecessary for that matter. I got a ton of my units left to move. Yeah, he's gonna start pushing down. Well, let's go, shall we? <laughs> or, or not. These units are terrible. <laughs> They're elite, but... These artillery units. I mean, I love to, like, do this, but good lord. Two, 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 three? Like, that's ridiculous. Yes, they come out. Well, we'll see what happens. We're up on the hill.
Now it's time for massive retreats. <laughs> Even with units that weren't actually directly involved in the battles, which is interesting. Well, there's some places to cap in there. Huh. Mostly my truths, but of course I don't get to go next. No, oh, no, it's just one of mine. Thought it was more. Which I get to go next. Hey, I was right. Oh, yeah, I might do that. Got a couple more on there. Yeah, it's pretty good. And that's the end of that turn. <laughs> they have a little bit more units than I do. Although it's actually the same number of things, but... Let's start pushing it. Well, I think that's a pretty good look at it. Uh, you know, you basically just keep moving troops around and you know, attacking and whatnot. I'll let the AI keep keep going while I'm talking. Overall, I think it's a good game. Uh, you know, now they've got what seems like they got the major bugs uh, fixed and repaired. Uh, you can actually play through the whole scenario without it locking up. Uh, they have a good number of scenarios. They have the full battle, which at 30 turns, you know, uh, takes a little bit of time depending on how fast you have the AI doing their turns. Um, but it does have each individual day and also really smaller scenarios uh, for only a couple turns uh, if you're looking for a quick fix. I like the uh, use of Slytherin's online play where it'll email you when it's your turn. Works really good for turn-based games such as this. Uh, the interface makes it fairly easy to find units because you can just click on the next button and it'll highlight them on the map. Also has nice indicators of unit health with the little open boxes here so you can see which units probably need to be retreated to uh, reheal. And also the arrows show probable but not guaranteed uh, damage during battle which is also a nice handy indicator of uh, you know where you need to attack and where you need to retreat. Uh, I think really the most notable aspect of the game is that all of the uh, unit movement is done randomly. You know, like I, as you've seen, you don't know who's going next. You don't know when combat's going to occur, and it can really uh, be good or bad. Uh, you know, for you based on who gets to move and when the combat actually occurs between units, and maybe after you're ready or before uh, your opponent or you is ready to go. So I think that adds a really a uh, layer of interest to the game. Gives a lot of replay value also because each scenario will play differently. Because only if this unit got to move first, I would have done a lot better, sort of thing. You know, combat's all automated. Has different phases uh, to go through to calculate who the victors are. Um, AI does a pretty good job. Uh, you know, you saw that they went up and tried to. You know, it basically subverted my little uh, sneak attack up here because there's no fog of war. They will move units that probably could have just stayed in one spot uh, and rehealed instead of uh, moving, but they play both well on offense and defense, certainly well enough to uh, provide a good opponent if you decide not to go online. And overall, this is definitely a game that's worth the $10 price tag. Uh, I think because of the way that the randomized turns go, that's really kind of the killer feature of the game, uh, which gives it a uniqueness amongst the turn-based strategy uh, genre. So it's a game I'd recommend simply just to take a look at that feature uh, and its reasonable price 
uh, you know, gives it another added bonus there. That's all I have for today. Until next time, bye now.